right. However, there is a problem also. Suppose if we go to 24 bit ADC, then it will be 5 volt corresponds to 5000 millivolt and 2 to the power 23. So, to 24 bit ADC is there. Ah, it is okay, 2 to the power 24 minus 1. So, so 5000 millivolt divided by 2 to the power 24 minus 1. So, this comes out to be extremely small, it will be it is right now 70 micro volt for 16 bit TDC, it will be hardly few nano volts, it will be few nano volts uh, for 24 bit ADC. You can compute that yourself whenever you find time. So, what is the meaning? The meaning is that 24 bit ADC is the best, because even if the input changes by a very small amount, it can change the digital output. This is the this is good. However, it has a problem. For example, if you take a wire, suppose we take a wire and keep it in normal ambient condition, and uh, if we think that this wire is a an inductor, it can induce some voltage because of some electromagnetic field around us. We have electromagnetic field around us even if we do not see that. So, there will be some small voltage induced here, it may be in nano volts or micro volts depending on the how, how strong the electromagnetic field is. So, suppose we have a sensor, we have a sensor, we have wires and we are connecting A to D converter A D C. So, these wires themselves start working as antennae and they get have they have some induced voltage. So, if the sensor itself is small or sensor voltage is small of the order of say micro volts and if the wires themselves produce nano volts then there is a problem. Correct. So, in this case we have to be very 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 careful while using 24 bit ADC. So, playing with 24 bit ADC is not so simple, we have to take care of lot of things. So, the aim was to understand resolution first parameter of A to D converter. Hmm. So, resolution we understood 8 bit ADC 256 levels and analog resolution is 20 milli volts for 16 bit ADC it is nearly 70 micro volts and for 24 bit ADC it is very very small. So, 24 bit ADC is used wherever it is required but the electrical design becomes complex because we have to take care of lot of things because uh, the noise levels are also of the same order of the signal fine so the first parameter is understood we'll go to the second parameter second parameter is the accuracy second parameter is accuracy so one is first one is resolution second parameter is accuracy Accuracy is the closeness to the correct value, closeness to the let me about this closeness to the correct value, closeness to the correct value. So, A to D converter basically contains mainly two sections. Suppose, if we draw the box once again, then it will have two sections usually analog section and digital section. Digital section will not cause problems as far as accuracy is concerned, but analog section will have some problems like uh, offset voltage or effect of bias current various analog uh, circuits will be there 
usually we'll use op amps op amps has ha, op amps have some imperfections in them so those imperfections will cause some problem and uh, then the accuracy is affected so accuracy of a to d converter is affected by analog portion and not by digital portion because both are there in the a to d converter everybody getting this point so we understood what is an accuracy <coughs> then we understood that it is affected by analog part of the A to D converter and when we try to use A to D converter then we will be more careful about handling analog part within ADC if allowed uh, while using the A to D converter if we want more accuracy and we will not concentrate on digital. Fine. The third uh, is the precision. precision precision is repeatability repeatability so it means if we give the same input does it provide the same digital output repeatedly if it is so we say that the precision is very good the precision can be good but the accuracy may not be good for example the input is say x it is producing the output y but the actual output is so suppose actual real output is y, but it is providing y plus delta y repeat repeatedly. It is producing y plus delta y repeatedly. So, the precision is good, but it is away from the correct value. So, accuracy is less. So, precision and accuracy they are different. Fine. So, having understood what is ADC, then why we use ADC, then some parameters mainly the resolution then accuracy and the precision we try to understand the types of the ADC. What are the types? Which one are the types? For what purpose they are used? So, there are various types. First one is single slope ADC, single slope ADC. The second type is dual slope ADC, dual slope ADC. The third uh, type is successive approximation, successive approximation ADC and the fourth one is flash ADC. There are some more types, but four are important for us. Single slope ADC, dual slope ADC, successive approximation ADC and flash ADC. We will start with understanding funda fundamentals of single slope ADC. Single so, we have single slope ADC. This will give us basic idea about how the A to D conversion actually starts. So, what we uh, do is we have input 0 to say 5 volt which can be changed to any value this is the input and the output we want 0 0 hex up to f f hex this is the output we want. Correct. This is this is number, some number we want to get, and this is the analog input, analog voltage that we have. So how do we convert this? So what usually is done is uh, we take advantage of the property of a capacitor that suppose we have a capacitor and we have grounded one of the terminals and we provide a constant current source this is the constant current source. The symbol can be anything, this is the constant current source. So, if there is a constant current source and if the capacitor voltage V c is initially 0, then it will grow this way 